How's it going, everyone? My name is Cynical, and welcome back to Higurashi, When They Cry. So, I hope you all enjoyed the previous video. If you haven't watched it, or if you would like to get caught up, as always, in the description box below, there is a link to the playlist. And I advise you to go ahead and check it out. So, without further ado, let's just continue. Uh, yes, we just finished chapter seven. Cool stuff. All right. Uh, continue. Where do we go from there? Hmm. Okay. Whose perspective are we in right now? Deiji or still Rika? Kurudesan to Hojo san wa Kesa Kazeo Hita no de Oyasumito Renda Kudari Masta. Ah, okay. Ima Kisetsu no Kawari Mede Taihen Kazeo Hikia Sui Jiki des. What? No, really? Atsui Karato Ite Onaka o Dasta Riste Nenai Yoni. I des ne? はあ、<coughs> Mion usually enjoys ideas like bringing people food when they're sick. For whatever reason, she was a little curt today. Actually, she's been acting a little different since this morning. Even when I talk to her, her thoughts seem somewhere else. Now she's asking Rena and me to stop by at her house. Feels a little weird now to be back in Keiji's perspective, but uh, it's welcome. Haven't been here in a while. What's <laughs> going <laughs> Mion seemed calmer than usual, which told me that it was about something very serious. Oh, we're just going right to it, huh? There are always lots of patients running into the clinic just before lunchtime. Because of that, lunchtime at the clinic is always later than normal's people. Normal peoples. No, people peoples. What? <laughs> it just, it's just a short break, though. Our afternoon shift begins right away. The staff were enjoying their break, eating their delivery lunches. They can eat basically anywhere they want, as long as the patients can't see them, and it's not a place we need to keep sterile. Because it's hot and humid, the meeting room with its air conditioner ends up being a popular place. The staff all eat their takeout lunches there. As I'm the director of this clinic, they might feel comfortable, uncomfortable, excuse me, eating with me around. So I usually eat my lunch in the director's office out of consideration for them. Today I ordered a lunch from a soba shop. I got an extra large. An extra large serving of marisoba, that is. For whatever reason, they just call the dish an extra large. That makes ordering it complicated, since if I order an extra large and a kitsune udon, they'll just deliver an extra large. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> How is this relevant to anything? Please. Ah, 
they will just deliver an extra large Katsune Udon instead. But is this really a large? It looks more like a regular size to me. As I recall, the owner of the restaurant was hurt her, uh, has hurt her hip, so she must be having a hard time keeping things running. I was still thinking about that when Takano-san came in. Finally. Like, <laughs> was any of that really necessary? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't care about your extra large or your bigger large or your larger large or your smaller large but still large Katsune Udon, okay? God damn it. Anyway, she was carrying a really... Okay. <laughs> Motherfucker! Okay. She was carrying a very large size order in her own hands. Apparently, she ordered a regular Marisoba, and I grabbed the wrong one by mistake. Ah, what a hassle. I'm so fucking happy we got through that. <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> oh, it's so easy. Uh, so you're just basically admitting that you just got a kid's meal. That's nice. That's nice there, buddy. Takano-san must have liked that idea. She laughed for a while. I invited her to sit on the sofa. Not that sofa. Oh my god! <laughs> if y'all know, you know. <laughs> Alright. Well. Anyways. Come to think of it, I haven't really talked that much with her. We were rather distant from each other, partly over the guilt of the organization becoming the Erie Institute. So with that, in our respective positions, we had a taciturn agreement not to pry too deeply into each other's uh, business. Since our attitudes towards our research are different, we've never mingled before. So chatting over lunch is a good way to get closer to her. I wonder what she likes to talk about while eating. I guess I should start a peaceful conversation. I don't want her to go off about something like tapeworms. No, because talking about that while eating food is the smartest play you could ever do. Right? We are having lunch after all. And while I tried to come up with a topic, she started talking instead. さっきのお子様ランチの旗の話。懐かしいですわね。今時のお子様ランチにはまだ旗は立っているんでしょうか。さあ、どうでしょうね。ああいうのは一つの様式ですからね。案外もっと未来になって宇宙旅行が実現する
当時の私にとってはデパートに連れて行ってもらえるのはお子様ランチが食べられるというのと同じ意味でだから両親が私の留守の間にデパートへ行ってしまうととてもへそを曲げたのを思い出しますわ<笑>高野さんの子供時代もとても素敵そうですねでも私一人を残してデパートへ出かけて二人ともバスの事故に巻き込まれて死んでしまいましたわその連絡が来るまで私はずっと両親を恨んでて今頃デパートのレストランで私をのけものにして美味しいものを食べてるに違いないって憤慨してて<笑>あと一本で旗が確か20本になるはずで20本が小さな目標だったのでそれを達成する機会がまた遠のいたとずっとむくれていてひどい話ですわね It must have been horrible to lose her parents at the age when she was still interested in collecting flags from kids' meals. It's obviously still a painful memory for her. So, this is so I was sure 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 I was 自分の家族に関わることが理由だったのでてっきり高野さんもそうだったのかと私が医師免許を取ったのは避難見沢症候群により近づくために必要だったからですわ失礼な言い方をすれば研究のためついでに取った免許ですわね How interesting Even when she was still at medical school, she already knew about Hinamizawa syndrome. So, y e a h I was a little bit of a shock. 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 もう症候群の研究に入られていたとは驚きです。私など盆栽でしたので、医師の勉強だけで精一杯でしたから、尊敬しますよ。<笑>木南沢症候群の研究に携わったのは、もっともっと前からですわね。What does she mean? How old was she when she first found out about the syndrome? In fact, why did she become familiar with it at all? What does she know? Jika, Satoko Chan, Yarika Chan, Tachi, to Onaji, the Shinsi Kina Yimasen, the Stano. So the Shisetsu ni Hikito Rarete. So the Gamo Honto ni Retsakuna Shisetsu de Ste. I guess these are not voiced lines. Okay. I was in a truly awful orphanage built solely to gather up those children and bring in government subsidies. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Not good. 研究資料に若くして触れることができていたのも納得ですしかしなぜそれを伏せられていたのですかまあ大人の事情ですわフード病研究のために予算を求めるのと死んだおじいちゃんの研究のために予算を求めるのでは少々事情が変わってきますからなるほど長いことの疑問が評価しましたあなたが高野先生を語る時の尊敬の眼差しは一研究者に対するものとしては説明できないものでしたのでしかしそこまで高野さんに尊敬させるとはよほど人徳のある素晴らしい先生だったんでしょうねさて人徳はどうだったでしょう誰にも理解してもらえずずっと孤独に研究してそのまま病死してしまいましたもの
祖父は孤独を愛する悪い癖がありましたので協力者を得られなかったんですわねでも高野さんという優秀な助手がいたじゃないですかそういえば高野さんも先生も読みは同じ高野ですねええ本当の名字じゃありません祖父に敬意を表して同じ名を本当は漢字も同じにしたいのですがクライアントに説明するときに誤解されたくないと思い読みだけを残して漢字を変えたんですわ Now I could see the connection between their two last names. That also revealed the connection between first names Hifumi and Mio, too. She doesn't need to tell me anything more than that. She lost her parents when she was young, and Dr. Takano took her in and loved her as if she was his own child. To show her love and respect, she decided to call him. Her grandfather. Now I know. That's the reason why she's devoted herself to researching Hinamizawa syndrome. I now understand how she must feel, knowing her research is soon to be terminated. Rikachan had said that she was hurt. Although I didn't know anything about it, I may have said something to hurt her before. I only cared about treatment and extermination. It didn't care about anything else until today. She must have considered that blasphemous towards her grandfather. Now I know why she became aggressive every time I expressed how I felt. After she was told that her research would be terminated, she stayed up all night and gathered up lots of documents. She went to Tokyo and requested an extension without depending on anyone else. And that request was rejected. The documents she used are now in a box in the underground storage. She must have exerted a lot of effort to put them together. Even someone without any knowledge of our research could easily understand what she was trying to say. However, it looked like some of those documents weren't even opened. And some had marks that told me they weren't treated the way documents are supposed to be. I'm sure, I'm sure some pages had absorbed her tears without me ever knowing. I heard from Tokyo that Takano san had left a terrible impression with the board of directors. It's not easy to overturn a bad impression. In other words, she can never request an extension on her research ever again. I was there when she found out about it. I was there when she found out she could no longer continue her grandfather's research, even though she must have promised him that she would complete it. Takano san wa, Iriye Kikan Heisa Go ni mo, Kojin Kenkyu o Tsuzuke rare masu ka? Iriye Kikan ga Heisa suru toki ni wa, 症候群は撲滅されていますわ病原体をシャーレに残し誰かをさらって感染者にして研究しろと個人で機材も予算も施設もなく誰にも顧みられなかった祖父のようにホルマリンの匂いのこもった書斎で誰にも評価されずざれごとだと笑われるためだけに研究を続けろともう若さもなく気力もなくただの負け犬に過ぎない私に何を続けろとおっしゃるんです<笑>タメタケさん once told me that the Erie Institute was supposed to be the Takano Institute But our clients didn't like the idea of a young woman heading the facility, and that's why I was invited. That explains why she's been unfriendly since the day we met. It must have been blasphemy to her to see me go on about Hinamizawa syndrome and decide on the research plan according to my values and morals. 
who Takano with the syndrome is her grandfather. She must feel his presence when she's researching it. That's the reason why she often stays at the institute until late at night, though it makes the mountain dogs uh, annoyed as they serve as a uh, security there. Hmm. Her shoulders look fragile to me for the first time. And now I'm sure of Rika-chan's story. Takano-san holds an indescribable sadness within her. And if someone approached her, pretending to understand, she just might fall for it. Because of my position, anything I say to her will only hurt her more, probably. Sometimes, words can harm people no matter how they are used. But... The fact that I still spoke up showed how little experience I had in life. It was all a slip. Even as I spoke, I started to regret trying to say anything. If I remembered right, Dr. Takano came down with acute dementia and chose to commit suicide while his mind was still functional out of despair at his inability to continue his research further. My verbal slip had made her remember a painful memory and hurt her even more. Takano-san asked me that as if it was a normal question. She's only expecting to hear one answer. Someone knocked on the door, and I heard the voice of one of the other staff members. ああ、申し訳ありません。今参ります。私が片付けておきますわ。所長は診療室へお急ぎくださいが、いつものお年寄りたちがよもやま話をしたくて大勢お待ちでしてよ。Takano-san <笑> laughed, but I know that laugh was trying to conceal her anguish. I'm not close to her personally, but she is my partner here at the clinic. I have been trying to avoid getting close to her, but maybe that was a mistake. If I had... If I had listened to her more, maybe I could have eased her pain a little. But it's too late. Tamatake-san is conducting an investigation to prove her innocence. Is she guilty or not? Either way, her heartache remains. After Iri left, Takano sat down on the sofa again and stared at nothing for a while. Then she got up and picked up on the phone uh, picked up the phone on the desk. Takano desu.お?お子の義はいる?私よ。20日からのつもりだったけど、今日からRの周辺監視を開始して。Oh shit. R. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that stands for Rika. 
Alright. Uh, it's too high. Can we do it tomorrow? え、お願い。よし。結構日まであと5日。5 Okanogi put down the phone and sighed. Although it's his job to do whatever Takano wants, he couldn't help but complain about getting such an order on such an extremely hot day. Of course, if he complained, Takano would spit back twice as much reproach. Oh my god! <laughs> Okanogi was sitting in the office of Okanogi Gardeners, a dummy company. As it happened, the uh, they regularly do, 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 do as it happened they regularly did gardening in Hanamizawa, if only so that nobody would get suspicious to see their uniforms and vans around <sighs> <laughs> their vacations are cancelled they were taking a vacation what the fuck? Princess! Kanshitaise I'm sorry, but the music that just came up. It brought back Umineko in my mind, and god damn it. I miss I, I I fucking miss Umineko man. Oh my god, I miss it so fucking much. God damn. The mountain dogs are different from a regular battle unit. They're uh, they are a technical squad formed from specialists in different fields of espionage. They were covert operatives for sabotaging telephone stations like Okanogi just ordered. Ones for wiretapping, intelligence gathering, information manipulation, establishing networks in public institutions, and many others in various specialized fields. They belong to the self-defense force. Some are, some are from fire departments, some are from police departments, and some are civil engineers. Of course, they, uh, they have some experts in combat as well. Okanogi is one of those combat experts, and he didn't expect too much from the engineers. While they all had gone through the same basic training, what they were capable of was child's play compared to what an expert can do. Okanogi is the leader of a unit made up of mostly of members who can't even do a hundred push-ups. Okay. <laughs> really, that was the only complaint he had. He'd rather have been put in charge of the bloodhounds. But somehow, he became the leader of this strange unit, maybe because of his cautious yet courageous personality. Since combat was his expertise, Okanogi wished deeply for combat. During the kidnapping incident five years ago, the plan was for the resisting criminals to leave the hostage behind on the scene and run after the police stormed in. He called the extremely frustrating memory of his combat with that plain clothes officer 
Is that who I think it's uh, he talking about? Oh, don't you worry, buddy, because I got this weird feeling you might get that rematch. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that happened. It happened in the anime, but I don't. I don't know if it's gonna happen here. But uh, I guess we'll find out, won't we? That old man was acting so arrogantly, but he could have taken him with. Uh, he could have taken him within a matter of seconds. He could have just broken his neck. He could have turned him around, and snap. It would have been so easy for him. He remembered a young policeman too. He shot him in the shoulder, but he could have shot at his ear. Why is this all... Why? Ah, okay, you know what, just... No, never mind. He was told to go easy on them, so that was the best he could do. He'd thought of firing a second shot, but there, was, there just wasn't time. So the last shot he fired was that reluctant one. Okanogi couldn't believe that such a pathetic battle was his last combat job. Regardless, he had continued to train so that he was ready at any time. Now that the operation had begun, he was hoping there would be a battle for him to fight. He didn't even need to fire a shot. He didn't even need to punch anyone. All Okanogi uh, wanted was a battle that satisfied his pride and nothing more. He's also the president of Okanogi Gardeners. Because of that, the members of the Mountain Dogs often call him that. Nomura. Okay. Uh, I think this is a good time to cut it off, right? Go ahead and save. Save in a new spot. There we go. I heard a noise! Yeah, well, you're about to hear another noise. Me going back to the menu screen! Alright. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit, well. Uh, how long have I been recording? 34 minutes? Damn. Alright. I was getting a little bit sloppy there in the end, as you probably saw and heard. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. I had to talk a lot in this one. I'm used to talking a lot, but at the same time, not as much. It's weird. It's like, I do good, but then I fuck up. Or I fuck up early, and then I do good later. I don't know. It's a weird mixture. Anyways, <laughs> I'm rambling again. How fun. But really, that fucking music, oh my god, it brought back memories. Oh, I miss Umineko so much. <sighs> Those were the days. <laughs> but we must... Go on and finish Higurashi. I really do want to do the side stuff, but I don't know if all of it is um, translated in English. I'll have to look up on that. It would be nice to do a little special every now and then. Go back to Umineko, even for the side story stuff, you know? Or the whatever. I don't know what they're called. They're not called side stories, right? They're called something else, right? I don't remember. <laughs> but you all know, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, come on, come on. You're all fans of this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, well, I feel like we did not get a lot done. 
that was um that was kind of like a filler episode. I'm not gonna lie, that felt like a needless, unnecessary bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Oh my god, why did I have to do this? Oh well. Um, I hope next time is a little bit better. By the sounds of it, I think we're going back to uh, Rika and Mion and KG and them. So that should be interesting. And until then, which will be next Wednesday, um, look forward to it. All right. So I'll see you all next time. If you did enjoy this video, though, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because there will be more Hikarashi on Wednesdays. And if you are also interested in Fata Morgana, I do those Mondays and Fridays. So look forward to that. All right. That's the end of my spiel, okay? I'm done. <laughs> see you all next time. See you then, and bye-bye.